This presentation is designed to help you avoid some of the most common sales and use tax mistakes. The Board of Equalization maintains an effective audit program designed to ensure that businesses report neither more nor less tax than required. In fiscal year 2007-2008, the Sales and Use Tax Audit Program disclosed net deficiencies of more than $329 million and more than $116 million in sales and use tax refunds. In conjunction with the audit program and as part of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, the Board annually identifies the areas of the sales and use tax law where taxpayer non-compliance is highest. This information is published each year in the Board of Equalization's annual report. Before detailing the areas of non-compliance, let's go over three of the basic aspects of the sales and use tax law. The sales and use tax law provides that all sales are taxable, unless the law provides a specific exemption or exclusion. The law provides that the person making the sale has the burden of proving that a sale is exempt from tax. Therefore, if an exemption does exist, the seller is required to support the exemption with proper documentation and retain this documentation for potential examination by the Board of Equalization. This presentation will cover the basic areas of sales and use tax non-compliance listed on the slide. The first two areas we will discuss include untaxed purchases from out-of-state vendors and withdrawal from resale inventory for your own use. As a seller of tangible personal property, you are entitled to purchase the items that you will resell without payment of tax. However, if you are purchasing consumable supplies that you are not reselling, such as paper or toner, fixed assets such as a copier, or other tangible personal property such as computer screen cleaner, you should pay the tax on those purchases. If you purchase these items from a retailer located outside of California that does not charge the California tax, you owe California use tax on the purchase price of the property. As stated previously, as a seller of tangible personal property, you are entitled to purchase property that you plan to resell without payment of tax. However, if you remove items from resale inventory and make a use of the property rather than reselling the property, you owe tax on your purchase price of the property. For example, if you give away merchandise as a gift or use the property yourself, you owe tax on the purchase price of the property. Also, if you use resale inventory for marketing purposes or research and development, that is considered a use of the property and you owe tax on the purchase price of the property. Reporting use tax is not limited to businesses. Individuals are also required to report purchases subject to use tax. Many consumers purchase items over the internet from out-of-state retailers. If your business is a sole proprietorship or a husband-wife partnership, you should report your individual purchases on your sales and use tax return. Otherwise, these transactions should be reported as purchases subject to use tax on a BOE individual use tax return or may be reported on your California income tax return. Next, we will discuss unsupported sales for resale. When you make a sale for resale, you should obtain supporting documentation from the purchaser. This typically consists of obtaining a resale certificate from the purchaser. It is important to keep your resale card file up to date, but also to retain old resale certificates. It's a good idea to maintain and update resale certificates periodically. A resale certificate may be in any form, provided it contains all of the required elements. For a resale certificate to be complete, it must contain the purchaser's name and address, the purchaser's valid seller's permit number, a description of the property being purchased, a statement that the property being purchased is for resale, and the resale certificate must be signed and dated by the purchaser. If the purchaser does not have a seller's permit number, the purchaser should indicate a valid reason why they do not have a seller's permit. Although not required, it is generally a good idea to also include the purchaser's type of business activity, the title of the person signing the resale certificate, and the name of the seller. If you wish to verify the seller's permit number included on the resale certificate as valid or not, you may call our toll-free number at 888-225-5263 or access our website. As the previous slide explained, you may verify a seller's permit number on the Board of Equalization's website. This is what the seller's permit verification screen will look like. Resale certificates are available at many stationary stores. A sample resale certificate is also available on our website as form BOE-230 or in Regulation 
or Publication 73. It is very important to remember that a resale certificate must be filled out completely, taken timely, and in good faith. To be considered taken timely, the completed resale certificate must be obtained prior to delivery of the property or within the seller's normal billing cycle, whichever is later. A seller is presumed to have taken a resale certificate in good faith unless there is evidence to the contrary. If the purchaser insists that the purchaser is buying items for resale that are not normally resold in the purchaser's business, the seller should require a resale certificate containing a statement that the specific property is being purchased for resale. This sample resale certificate, form BOE 230, is available on the BOE website. You may find it under the Forms and Publications tab or searching by form number. As provided previously, a resale certificate may be in any form, provided it contains all of the required elements. Many purchasers utilize a purchase order when purchasing property. Provided the purchase order contains all of the required elements, the purchase order may be used as a resale certificate. It is important to note the language used on the purchase order must state for resale and may not use alternate language such as exempt, non-taxable, or some other language. Some purchasers utilize a combination of a resale certificate and a purchase order. The resale certificate will contain all of the required elements except for a description of the property. Under the description of the property, it will provide C purchase order. Each purchase order will then indicate whether each individual purchase is taxable or for resale. In this case, both the resale certificate and the purchase order together make a valid resale certificate, and both documents must be retained by the seller to support a claim sale for resale. Beware of the situation where a purchaser tells you a purchase is for resale, and instead of providing you with a valid resale certificate, provides you with a copy of their seller's permit. A copy of the seller's permit only shows that the person is engaged in business in this state and does not shift the liability for the tax to the purchaser. Only by obtaining a valid resale certificate will the liability for the tax be shifted to the purchaser. Misuse of a resale certificate is a misdemeanor. If a purchaser is found to have issued a resale certificate for property that was not purchased for resale, the purchaser is subject to a penalty of $500 or 10% of the amount of tax per transaction. For example, if an audit of a purchaser discloses three different purchases totaling $2,000, the purchaser would be subject to a penalty of $1,500 in addition to the tax due on the purchase price of the property.